Hi everyone, this is Will at Undo Media. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to place video inside text to create an epic cinematic title intro like this in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and leave a like below for more videos like this. You've probably seen this effect before in the trailer for the movie 1917, and you can apply this effect to any length clip, but for more dramatic effect, I'm using a fairly long 30 second clip here. Alright, here we are in Premiere Pro 2020. I've got a sequence here in the timeline with a piece of stock footage I found on Pexels. And if you're looking for cool stock footage like this that you can get for free, be sure to check out our video on free stock footage websites. I'll give that a quick play here so you can see what we're working with. It's a uh, long, sweeping drone shot over the mountains and, well, perfect for what we're uh, trying to achieve here. So to create this effect, we're going to put this video clip inside some text. And obviously the starting point is going to be creating some text. And to do that, I'm going to go over here and select the type tool, click anywhere in the preview window and type out my text. And since this is a tutorial on creating an epic cinematic title intro, I'll type out epic. So this is going to create a new track above our video track uh, containing our text. Next, I'm going to want to style up my text a little bit here. We could do this directly in the Effect Controls panel, but for this tutorial, we're going to go up top to the Graphics Workspace. And if you don't see this tab here, you'll be able to find it under Window Workspaces Graphics in the top menu. This will open up the Essential Graphics Workspace. I'm going to go over and click Edit, make sure my text is selected. And what you're going to see here are some text editing tools very similar to those you'll find in Photoshop or Illustrator. The very first thing I'm going to do is check the fill color of the text and make sure that it is indeed solid white, which in my case it is. I'm going to set the horizontal and vertical alignment of the text itself, bring it back over to the middle here. And this effect is going to work best with a nice heavy font. I'll be putting the video into the text, remember, so I want something that will allow a lot of that video to show through. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select Gilroy Heavy. Make it all caps. I'm going to bring up the size a little bit here on it. And since I like round numbers, I'm going to actually type in a 600. And I'm going to tighten up the space between these characters here. I can do that with these tracking and kerning tools. I can use the slider to increase or decrease the space between characters, or I can just type in a value, a positive number for more space, and a negative number for less. And I can even fine tune this a little bit more by clicking between individual characters and adjusting the kerning. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now the last thing we're going to do with this text is make sure it's centered in the middle of our video frame. We can do that by clicking these two little boxes up here, one for vertical center and one for horizontal center. And now our text should be perfectly centered in the middle of the frame. We can leave the essential graphics workspace. We're not going to need that anymore and go back to the editing workspace. Now we want to go back down to the timeline and extend the type track to the full length, equal length of the video below it. And we now have our stylized white text on a track above our video clip. Now we want to place that video inside of our text and we're going to do that by going over to the effects panel and searching for an effect called the track matte key. You could also find that effect directly by navigating through video effects keying track matte key. I'm going to select that effect and I'm going to drag it over and drop it on top of my video footage. Now you'll notice nothing has changed yet. But up in our effect controls panel, we now have the track matte key. And the first option in that effect is the matte option, which is currently set to none. But if I toggle that option open, I'll see that I have choices between video 2 and video 3, which correspond to the tracks in the timeline above the video to which I have this effect applied. If I had more tracks in the timeline or named tracks in the timeline, I'd see those represented in the options as well. So I need to select which track will serve as my mat in the track mat key, which in my case is video two, the track containing my text. And if I select that, like magic, we now have video inside of our text. And if I give that a little play, 
you'll see that the video plays within the text. And if you're watching this tutorial just trying to figure out how to get video inside text without further animating the text, you could be done right now. Yep, be on your merry way, leave us a like on the way out, or stick around and we'll build this out a little further. I'm going to add a little animation to this scene so that it begins with the full mountain video clip showing and slowly zooms the text into position. And to do that, I'm going to reposition the playhead to about two-thirds, three-quarters of the way through this clip, basically where I want my text to finish animating in. Make sure the clip is selected, and in the Effect Controls panel, add keyframes for both scale and position. Then I'm going to drag my playhead over near the beginning of the scene, not quite to the start. I want to leave a little room to maneuver. And back in the Effects Control panel, I'm going to scale my text up. I can do that by using the slider or just plugging numbers in directly, which will automatically add a new keyframe. Now, depending on the actual characters in your text, no matter how large you make this, uh, you might still have problems. In my case, the space between the P and the I is kind of dead center, and no matter how large I make this, it's going to fill up the screen with that black space in between, and I don't want that. Which is why I added that position keyframe as well as the scale keyframe. If I was using a different word and the characters lined up better in the middle of the screen, I might not need to animate the position at all, but in my case I do. So I'm going to go back up and at the same frame where I begin my scale animation, I'm going to slide everything over to the right a little bit here. I could move it right, I could move it left. In my case, moving it right made more sense. I just want to make sure that it fills up the entire screen and all I see is the underlying video. So now I have a scene that starts off no text, just the video. And as I go forward, my text zooms into place. So this is already looking pretty good. The one thing you will notice is if I give this a play, the text as it hits my last keyframe will sort of stop dead in place. And we can make that animation a little smoother in the end by going up, right clicking on that keyframe and selecting Ease In. And now that resizing effect will slow down as it gets to the end. And of course it's a little wonky there just because I need to also ease in my position keyframe. Try that again. There you go. And I want to finesse this even a little further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the playhead down near the end of this clip, go up and add another keyframe, about 90% size in that scale. So now if I go back and play that through, you'll see that my text size will ease into that 100% and keep going down slowly towards the 90%. Now in my case, because I shifted the position of the text when it started the animation, it doesn't quite line up on the left and right sides of that text where the E and the C are when it enters the screen. So I might want to do a little more finessing here. I'm just going to slide that first keyframe I set for position over to the left a little bit so it starts a little bit earlier, kind of to balance out how things enter the screen. That looks pretty good. And if I scrub through the timeline, everything kind of sits in the middle nicely from beginning to end, nice and smooth. Maybe give that a little play here. And that's looking pretty good to me. And again, we could probably stop right here. It's pretty good right now. But I want to enhance this even further and make it all the more epic. I want this mountain footage to zoom out even further as the scene progresses. It's sitting inside my text, but it's still actually the full width and height of the uh, scene. So there's room to play with it here and bring it down further in size. Now you might think, I could just go down here in the timeline, select that mountain video clip, and then add a few keyframes and animate it the same way I animated my text layer. But if I try and change the scale on that clip, you'll see that both the text and the mountain video change in size, which is not what I want. And that's because of the track matte key, which is kind of attaching both those tracks together. But there is a way to do this. So I'm going to undo those last couple changes and then go down to my footage and right click and then select nest, which is going to open up a dialog box where I can create a nested sequence. I can give that nested sequence a name, click OK, and now you'll see that my original footage has changed colors, indicating that it is now a nested sequence. 
And if I double click on that, I can open up a new panel window with my new nested sequence. And this nested sequence will contain my clip as well as any effects I've applied to that clip. So this clip still has the track matte key effect applied to it, but of course there's no text or other matte layer above it, and it's useless here. So I'm gonna select that effect, right click, and then select cut. Then I'm gonna go back to my original sequence, select my nested layer, and paste that effect onto it. And now I have my original track matte key effect applied to the nested sequence. And with a little bouncing back and forth between my two sequences, I can apply a scale animation to the footage in the nested sequence without disrupting the original sequence. This can take a little tinkering, so I'm gonna fast forward here quickly. And once I'm happy with my changes, I'll play that back and you'll see our mountain footage zooming away even further than before and creating a far more cinematic and dramatic effect. It might seem a little jumpy and pixelated in the program window, but once we uh, render that or export it, it'll be perfectly smooth. Just to give you a better idea of what I've done here, I'll turn off that track matte key effect here, and you'll see the nested footage is now sort of shrinking along with that text a little more to add to the effect. I can go in here and fine tune to my heart's content and make it just perfect. And once I'm done finessing, I'll have a nice animated sequence here where everything comes in nice and smooth. And when it gets smaller, the footage behind it keeps on zooming out nicely. All right, so that's how you place video inside text and create a cinematic title intro like this. I'm gonna play the final result out full screen while I say my goodbyes. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and give us a like.